how you can be successful at Crazy Games. People have different opinions about the web and what it is. On the web, it's completely different. We've got really interesting tech like WebGPU. There are 300 million monthly game plays. Uh, what we want to highlight is that we don't really need to have like a massive team to actually get going on the web. That's what we're trying to do with Crazy Games as well. Uh, my name is Rafael Morgan. I'm the VP of Marketing and Partnership at Crazy Games. I've been in the company for over three years, but I've been working on web with web games more than 10 years now. So I've seen the dark times and now to the good times. Um, and we're, we're, we're just getting started, you know, with the default, um, I think Don, which will present, you know, we're going to show up some of the, the cool stuff that we're doing, but we're very excited about like partner up uh, with default and, you know, help the community to understand how you can be successful at crazy games. We're just back from Gamescom and, you know, it was crazy just to see like the amount of, of feedback or the positivity that we get, you know, the industry is not in, I would say not in the best shape ever. Right. But, uh, but for web games, I think there's a lot of excitement not only for you know from typical web platforms but also from bigger partners bigger companies like you know we're seeing all joining the space so um, i know people have different opinions about the web and what it is um and crazy games were on the mission to change that uh with the sort of content that we have and yeah we're especially in love with indie developers um i think you know the base of our developer community are indie devs are small teams um, but obviously we also work with big publishers. So it's just nice to be here and connect. With that, I'll let Don do the presentation. Here's Don, Don Harris, please take it over. Hello. Um, yeah, again, big thanks to Default for letting us do this. I'm really excited to kind of get stuck into the community. And so I am Dom. I have been making games for 20 years. I started in the big flash boom. So that kind of got around the internet filters at school. I joined Crazy Games, I think it was three months ago now. I've not been here. A huge amount of time but i'm loving it so far my job is to basically be the bridge between you guys the developers and the business team at crazy games so that's kind of hands-on support with sdk integration game optimization if you've got any questions you come to me i help make it better my favorite thing about this role is that i essentially get to be your champion so i am taking all your feedback Passing it on to the team, we're making changes, we're making things better for everybody. Just yesterday, I ran a kind of fireside chat where we I just sat in the Discord server, played some games, and took questions from our developer community, which was, uh, it was really nice. There were lots of interesting questions. People don't hold their tongue when they are asking questions like this. It's great. And kind of because I've been making games for so long, I've joined over 100 game jams. I've made a couple of commercial games. Um, there are problems in the indie space and that is essentially what we're here to solve um when you are on steam steam players want this huge kind of 40 hour epic game so you know silk song just took 10 years to make um they had what 150 million at least from hollow knight like they have these huge budgets a lot of them have huge teams like it, it's hard to compete with that um, and then you go to mobile and it's just so saturated and you have to pay loads for user acquisition and there's just so much to think about and do. On the web, it's completely different. Small games actually do really well. So you can develop something for a month or two and that will still perform really well. It's a different audience. So there are a ton of players. They all want to play a game, but they all want to play all of the games. So you've got to keep them coming back. And really the best way to do that is to make a really fun game. And I love that. <laughs> that just means you get to focus on what you want to do uh, and you can still earn a bit of money from it. And uh, there are studios uh, that I'll talk about later that are actually earning a, you know, a salary. Uh, and that's, that's something that's really hard to do in the indie space. Web games in particular are really powerful because you don't have to download anything. You can just jump straight in from a link, no downloads, no installations. Um, that's it. You're playing the game. Games on the web are also like, cross-platform you can play on your desktop you can play on your phone on your tablet that just increases your reach so the, there are more players there are more people that see your game and play your game you earn more money it's great and if you're playing with friends uh, you don't have to i mean back in the day you had uh, the minecraft servers and joining those was a nightmare like it is just one one link you click it uh, you're in the same room as them you're playing a game together and it's cool in the recent years, technology has come a really long way. Game engines have come a really long way. Default in particular are doing really great stuff. Um, so build sizes from default are really small, which works well on the web. I'll kind of talk about that a bit more later. But we're at the point where it's, it's kind of ready now. 
we've got fast browsers, we've got the engines, uh, we've got really interesting tech like WebGPU, which kind of gives you the full access to the GPU in the browser. So typically games before WebGPU were kind of um, GPU uh, throttled, so you couldn't make the kind of big, pretty 3D sort of things you want to do. This sort of game is now possible on WebGPU uh, and default supports it. And Crazy Games are the first platform to commercialize WebGPU enabled games, um, which is really cool. I love WebGPU because it means you get access to things like compute shaders, which if you don't know, that's running code on the GPU like you would run, uh, run it. Uh, run normal code. I use this. Uh, I like to make bullet hell games, uh, lots of bullets on the screen. Uh, it can be quite intensive for the CPU. Uh, I offload the kind of calculations to that to the GPU using compute shaders. And that means in a browser, I get 120,000 bullets at 60 FPS at 4K. Like it's really quite crazy. You just wouldn't have been able to do that without. I think I got about one to 2,000 before. And nobody needs that many bullets in a game. But having the headroom, uh, to kind of increase it like that is just, it's really nice. It, mean, it means you can do so much more. So I'm, I'm really excited by WebGPU. There are a few other technologies, there's WebAssembly and things like that that are coming along, but this is, this is my favorite of them. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about Crazy Games. Um, we are a huge platform. There are 40 million monthly active users. There are 300 million uh, monthly game plays. There are 3,000 developers. We are actually the first, the top result, in a lot of areas, in a lot of regions, for games, when you search games on Google, um, we're the top result in a lot of areas, uh, which is really cool, the top organic result, that is. So we are a big platform. We want to help you, and we want to get your games in front of people, basically. There's a, an SDK to use with Default. Um, it actually supports our entire kind of suite. Ads, which is the main way you'll monetize, um, which I'll talk about a bit later. Ads are all supported. Um, game events, so we've got a little confetti event uh, that you can fire when something cool happens, like you finish a level, confetti pops up off the screen. There's gameplay start and stop events, which kind of help with the analytics. Invitation links, so you can have the player copy a link, send it to their friend. They join them in that in the same game um, and in the same kind of multiplayer room as well. On top of that, you've got our user system. So you've got login, username, profile pictures, all the stuff you'd expect. Alongside that, we have data storage. So this is just cross-device uh, progress saving. So all of your game state can be saved to the user. The user comes back on a different device. They pick up from where they left off, which is, uh, it's really easy to use. And then we've got in-game purchase, which is powered by Axola. Again, I'll talk a little bit more later on. Monetizing the web is a little bit different from Steam, might be a bit different to what you're used to. It's primarily ad-based. And so that's, uh, there are a few different types of ads. We've got rewarded ads. Uh, so that is the player will click a button They'll watch an ad, they'll get a reward. You can use that for um, extra currency when you die. Um, you can use it to revive when you die. That's a, another good good one. You can have extra little bonus events that happen and you get extra bonuses and things like that. Players like this because they actually choose to do it. They can ignore it. They choose to do it. Um, and because of that, that tends to mean they pay out a little bit higher. Then you've got mid-game ads, which are probably the ones you're used to. So you die, a big full-screen ad plays. It happens for everybody. They get a lot of views, um, but they're also worth a little less. You have to do those to, in a uh, kind of natural game, uh, natural pause in the gameplay. You know, you die, you start a new level, like all of these types of things. That's where a mid-game ad will work really well. And then you've got banner ads. Uh, they are basically a big rectangle on your game that shows an ad. Uh, typically, you'd want to put those in a menu, that sort of thing. And then we've got a really big, fast-growing segment in in-game purchases. Uh, so they're growing really quickly. It's a fairly simple, straightforward integration. Um, you can do you know, pay to remove ads. You can do pay for more currency, that sort of thing. Um, in-game purchases are, are doing better now. Uh, so they're, they're improving over time. They're doing really well. So you've got your game. You've got it monetized. Uh, you've got our SDK integrated. Um, how do you actually release on Crazy Games? It's a really in, uh, easy process. I've got here the uh, a screenshot of the upload portal. You give it a name. You tell us your, the game engine you're using. Tell us a bit about the game. There are a few options to select. And then you upload the game. And that is basically it. From there, it will go into what we call basic launch, which is like a soft launch. So you don't need to actually have the SD SDK implemented for this. So if you've got a game 
that you think will do well on crazy games and kind of put it through basic launch. It's a limited audience, uh, monetization is disabled, but you get all of this uh, data and you can see what's, see what's going on. When we do basic launch, we track three kind of key performance in indicators. That's your average playtime, day one retention, and conversion. So average playtime is what it sounds like on this pin. You have, uh, it is the amount of time people spend in a game, in your game. So that's typically not in menus, that sort of thing. It's actually playing the game. Then you've got day one retention, which is how many players play your game and then come back again the next day. And that's a really, really important metric for the web because there are so many games, because there's so much choice, getting players coming back is really important. And then you've got conversion, which is kind of like your uh, click-through rate. Players will see a big play now button. They click it. If they've played for a minute, then that counts towards your conversion. So it's kind of the ratio of people that play for at least one minute compared to the clicks on the play now button. And then after that, you go through our QA process. There's a full list of requirements here. I won't spend too long on it. It's on our website, um, but the kind of big ones are for the full launch, you've got to have the SDK. We do a full QA check. The QA team are great. They'll give you loads of feedback. It can seem quite daunting when they give you this huge wall of feedback, but it's actually really useful as a game developer. Um, like we've got a really solid QA process. And then when, once all of that's passed, you've probably had some changes to make. Then it'll go into full launch and it's out there. And I think you're probably wondering what sort of games do well on crazy games. A lot of uh, smaller games tend to do great. These are typically games with high retention and a decent amount of playtime. So kind of 10 minutes is the playtime, the kind of minimum playtime I'd look for. Um, but you've got uh, a few here that I've just chosen from our category uh, catalog. We've got so a hyper casual game in Slice Master that, that tends to work quite well. Um, You've got racing games, you've got this uh, kind of ragey rock, rock climbing game, uh, all stuff that you can make essentially on your own in a few months. Like it works well. The big thing to kind of keep track of is retention. So that's getting players coming back. That means uh, so the things that work well for that are kind of leaderboards. And um, so leaderboards work really well because they get people competing. They want to beat their own high score. They want to climb the leaderboard. Um, that keeps them coming back. Uh, you've got things like um, daily challenges and daily rewards. Uh, those sorts, sorts of things tend to work quite well as well. So I'm making a kind of climbing game a little bit like the rock climbing game over there. Um, but you have a new level every day. And when you complete the level, you get a time, you can share that. Um, so that, that sort of thing works well. Um, and racing games, multiplayer, multiplayer does really, really well. Multiplayer games I see have a really, really long tail. So they just keep going. Um, I'm going to open the floor to questions now because I'm sure you all have quite a lot. Um, so if anybody's got any questions, then uh, I'd love to hit them and help answer. Thank you, Dom. Um, yeah, I feel I feel like for for crazy games, uh, what we want to highlight is that you don't you don't really need to have like a massive team to actually get going on 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 the web. We or our catalog is it's built um, um, to cater to across different um, different age groups, right? Um, obviously, I mean, I grew up playing games on MiniClip, so um, we do have you know that I would say the teenagers or or like the um, the, the typical web gamers, but we also see like that we're growing across different geo, uh, di different demographics. Um, we start adding more and more mid-core games as well. So there's some MMO games that are doing pretty well on the platform. We have like this match two, match three games as well. So I mean, the, the platform is growing really um, across um, all, all age groups. So you know, even if you like something that it has more depth, something you you would like to build, I mean, there's also space for it. So um, and that that's what we're trying to do with crazy games as well.